J.P. Aaron Sebia goes yard. Um, Dirk Hayhurst, I've got to ask you. You've been a frequent quit- critic of uh, J.P. Aaron Sebia. Are you about now? Are you ready? Are you ready to express <laughs> your unrequited love for J.P. Aaron Sebia as a catcher? At least I don't. I don't want to know anything more than that. <laughs> but are you ready to admit that you've been fundamentally wrong about? J.P. Aaron C.B. and no. that he, in fact, is God's gift to the American am, League. No, no, I am not. I'm completely Ugh. not ready to requit anything. I, I'm sorry. Look, it's not that I dislike the guy. It's not that I dislike the home runs. I don't. I'm just home as runs a, are great. At, they are. They're a wonderful thing. But as a baseball player and a baseball analyst, I have to tell you, he has not reached his full potential. And it could be a glorious thing when he does, if he does. But I'm starting to feel like he never will. And what I mean by that is the power is great. I love the home runs, but he is. It's not a question of he might. He will strike out 200 times this season. And he will walk, I mean, roughly around 20 times, which is a ridiculous number. I mean, that's it's such a ridiculous number. It, it baffles the mind. It's not a He's not a three-true outcome guy. The TTO stat, you've mm-hmm. seen that before. Your, your Adam Duns of the world, where they walk a lot and their on-base percentage is high and they still have a lot of power. No, he's going to K a lot or hit home runs. And that and that's it. And to, and to me, I, I mean, I hate to say it, but when you approach the game that way, and bear in mind, I like the guy, great guy, love his Twitter presence. I mean, there's so many things you want to like about JP, and that's what makes criticizing him hard and not catching hell for it from every digital outlet out there. I think I think it's a selfish approach. I do. I, uh, I think that he could walk. I mean, you don't have to change your swing to walk more. So I was going to ask. Don't you don't have to. You do. It's not like you know Kobe Rasmus gets criticized, and they, you know change your swing against lefties. Be more defensive. Okay. Now I will give. I will grant you this, Jeff. When you are a player and you have something that works for you, like your swing, the last thing you want to do is have the umpire or sorry, the coach come up to you and say. Uh, well, you know, I really like you to just swing, swing, she would be more defensive, you know, drive, drive the ball the other way, you know, like give me, when he comes up, you might want to reject that because it's not working for you. You're going to overhaul something and then you lose what is working. But in this case, you just keep the shoulder on your, or the bat on your shoulder mm-hmm. and you get on base more, period. I mean, his swing rates at balls out of the zone, his chase rates, they're all really high. And what's saving him right now is he's making contact with enough of those things to the wall that it's okay. But Power is streaky. There are very few guys that can maintain the amount of power he has, and he is going to have a couple months this season where he's an absolute liability, king. I would say, 13, 14, 15 times in a row if he continues to do this. And that means there's going to be a lot of droughts, and I don't think that that is the mark of a fully balanced hitter. I think that he's got tremendous upside, but I don't think he's reached it yet, and I think that it's okay for people to say, Oh, he doesn't have to do anything else but just keep hitting home runs. This pace will not sustain. And for him to become a truly balanced hitter, he needs to walk. That's all I'm saying. What if I told you that J.P. Aaron Sebia was, in fact, a genius? Oh, man. And what if I pointed you to an article by Tom Verducci of Sports Illustrated, Virtue and Victory No Longer Synonymous with Patience at the Plate? This is a wonderful article, by it's the way. It's a tremendous if you, article. If you are a sabermetric yeah. person, you need to. This it, is you got to check this out. It's on sportsillustrated.com, by the way. But essentially, um, well, Verducci takes a look at catchphrases such as driving up pitch counts, taking pitches, quality at bats, all that stuff. And uh, bottom line is the best idea appears to be to strike early. Teams that get a lead after as little as two innings and win 70% of the time. But more to the point, he... He, he basically says, and he uses Joey Votto as an example, um, you know what? Uh, hitters are swinging at the first pitch less and less and striking out more and more, and guys that don't do it are becoming almost an- an- anomalies now. Yeah. Yeah, and it's this was what it goes against. This flies in the face of everything that you out there, baseball fan, have probably ever thought about baseball, which is stay in the count longer, drive the pitch count up, Make the other make the opposing pitcher work, and you will win ball games. Well, the fact of the matter is, is last year, according to this article, there were 13 teams that ranked above average in most pitches per plate appearance. Nine of those 13 teams did not make it to the postseason. The two pennant winners, San Francisco and Detroit, ranked 25th and 27th in pitches per plate appearance, which means that the amount of total pitches you see and the amount of pitches you see per plate appearance does not correlate to winning, mm-hmm. which... If you are Dirk Hayhurst, you must eat a nice, (laughs) 
handful of crow right now. When served you, by J.P. Pierre and Sevier. Served by J.P. Pierre and Sevier. Absolutely. He may be a genius. Or or this article may be flawed because it doesn't show batting average on balls in play. It does not. It just, it just it doesn't show a lot of the outcomes. Mm-hmm. But it does show that there is no correlation between pitches seen and victory. But there is a correlation between more pitches seen and more strikeouts, which – which I mean, I have I have preached this like yeah. the gospel during radio broadcasts. You see more pitches, your on base percentage goes up, and apparently it does not. Your K percentage goes up. The and and, and as Verducci points out, there's beyond just sort of the saber metric stuff. There's uh, there's kind of an issue here. I don't know if you'd call it an issue, but there's something for baseball to consider. Eighty one percent of the game is nothing. Pitch is not, yeah, not Pitch is not play. being put in play. It's boring. Yeah. Baseball is boring. So that's why, again, this is what I'm up against. When yeah. I say J.P. Aaron C.B. could be better. He's the, exciting. He's exciting. Yes, he swings at stuff. People don't swing anymore. And J.P.'s up there just hacking away like a serial killer. I mean, look at him go. You know, it's fun to watch. It, it is. An, it's entertaining. But you want him to be the, the player he could be.